Hey guys, Derek and Bella here from Back to Reality. And if that channel name sounded a little weird to you, it's probably because you haven't seen our previous video yet. So you better go back and watch that one first <laughs> because in it we explain the entire thought process and philosophy that went into our channel name change. But one of the ways that we like to get back to reality is by getting back to nature. And in order to get back to nature, you got to get out into nature. And so that's what we're going to do this afternoon. On the snowiest day ever. <laughs> no time like the present. <laughs> <laughs> Back when Paula and I first started dating, it was our shared love of nature that truly brought us together. Whether it's the fresh air, the exercise, or just being away from the hustle and bustle of the city, there's just something about being outside in the woods that makes us feel alive. Many of us spend much of our time walking on concrete, breathing exhaust fumes, and doing our best to tune out the sound of traffic. And while it may have many redeeming qualities, we often don't realize the toll that this urban environment has taken on our physical and psychological well-being. But even just a few minutes in the woods is often all it takes to shake these artificial distractions and remind ourselves what life is supposed to be all about. A walk in the woods is also a perfect opportunity to observe nature, to watch the changes of the seasons, to rejoice in the occasional sighting of a partridge or a flock of finches. During the winter months, the snow-covered forest floor even allows us to witness the passage of time. By following the tracks left by deer, coyotes, and rabbits, we can get a sense of their daily rituals, usually hidden from us by the cover of night. A walk in the woods can also be meditative, in that it's often an activity without a tangible goal, without a destination. Just walking, simply for the sake of walking. By repeatedly putting one foot in front of the other and losing yourself in that natural silence, it can be an opportunity to think, or just to clear your mind completely, whichever you happen to need at that moment. But this afternoon, our walk does have a purpose. You see, we've noticed on many previous strolls along our trail that there are a couple of spots where the tracks left by deer and coyotes seem to naturally congregate. One is in the open space by Paula's favorite apple trees, and another is a narrow path that they've imprinted right through the center of our woods. So, in hopes of seeing what they're up to when we're not around, we've borrowed two of these trail cameras and plan to discreetly set them up where they might take some photos of the activity. Trail cameras are usually used by hunters who wish to observe the health and routines of their prey animals in order to better plan their hunt. But for us, we simply hope to observe these beautiful creatures in their natural environment and without disturbance. From what we gather, all trail cameras are fairly similar. They're weatherproof, they usually use a motion detector to sense the presence of an animal, and either a flash or an infrared mode to allow them to capture photos at night. Plus, they typically run on batteries and use a memory card to store the images. So here's a perfect example of where we would want to put one of these cameras. There's a really clear path here. It's a little hard to tell because now it's covered in like this much snow. <laughs> but there's a, a pretty obvious path here where the deer walk back and forth constantly. And on other days, whenever we've been out when there isn't this much snow on the ground, we were able to actually see their, their tracks really clearly. So this is one of the spots that we wanted to look for. So I think maybe if we put the camera on one of these trees here, just facing down the trail, we'll hopefully be able to get some of the deer walking up the trail and some of the other deer walking back. And you never know, we might still be able to get like a coyote or you know a pheasant or a partridge or something as well. So whenever we put this on the tree, we want to put it about three, maybe four feet in the air, but uh, a little bit lower than you would expect because the camera typically shoots upwards. So if you put it uh, too high, you'll actually just get the top of their head and that's about it. So I'm going to strap this around here. There we go. We'll just kind of 
make sure that we adjust it a little bit, try and aim it so that we actually get the best shot possible. And then these bungee cords aren't the ones that actually originally came with it. We're just using the bungee cords that we had because unfortunately the ones that came with it have uh, since been lost, but these work just fine. You just wanna make sure that they're nice and tight without being so tight that it actually damages the tree. And there we go. So now we'll open it up and turn it on. There we go, once that red light comes on and the display comes on here solid, we know that it's on. And then we'll lock it back up so that it stays weatherproof. And that's it. Now we just gotta wait for some animals to walk by. A few days later, we went back out to grab the memory cards and see if we were lucky enough to capture any photos. Cool. Okay, let's check it out. Well, <laughs> the display says zero, 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 zero. Uh, so that seems to say that it didn't take any photos at all. No. But we'll take the memory card anyway and hopefully we got something and it just doesn't know about it. So we'll just pop that out. We might as well turn this off for now. There we go. All right, one memory card. Let's go get the other. This one says we got seven photos. Nice. Watch, it's probably snow falling off the tree. <laughs> You're probably right. All right, got the other memory card. Now let's go back to the house and see if we got anything good. Cool. Okay, let's see what we got. Yes. So I think we'll try the one that said zero, zero, zero first. No. <laughs> You're serious? Yeah, so I don't know why, but I guess that camera didn't work. All right, huh. uh, that's okay. I rejected it. Let's put in the other one. Luckily, we've got two, and this one said that there were seven photos. So hopefully we got something there. Oh, <gasps> looks like we got some photos. I think I see Look at something. That. All right, let's see, we've got this one. Nothing. Nothing in that photo. <laughs> That's like, what time? That is... Four in the morning. Yeah, 401 on the 13th. Completely black. Nothing there either. And there's not even any footprints. No, so that's gotta just be snow, but you can see a bunch of spots in here and this is where the snow's fallen. Oh uh, yeah. So it could just be that. Wow, it's really snowing here. That was on the 15th. All right, now let's Go. look at these two. I believe these two are worth it. Oh, oh he's that. so cute. That's adorable. So that's at on the on the oh, on Valentine's Day on the fourteenth at seven thirty eight a.m. Look at her little eyes. Yeah, she got a little bit of snow in her head. <laughs> that's adorable. Okay, now let's look at this one. Oh my goodness, look at that. That's a deer on our forest. Look at how fuzzy it is. I want her. <laughs> So this is, this is on Valentine's Day as well, but it's a couple hours later, it's at 9.13. Oh my gosh. Okay, so that is like the perfect picture. Yeah, that is. She's looking right at the camera. Oh. That's gorgeous. Well, you know what? We only got two photos from two cameras over three days, but like we couldn't ask for a better photo than that. That's so perfect. I just want to like squeeze her. She's so cute. Well. So, that made it all worth it. So I'm going to take these two memory cards back outside, plug them back in, and hopefully figure out what's up with that other camera. And we'll see you next time.